Greetings friends, Juan and Gruzica here, and this is the weekly Russian-Ukrainian war update for the weeks of uh, January 8th through 21st of 2024. Now I apologize that um, I didn't make a video weekly update last week, and uh, that was because I was on vacation, and so I, I didn't have my computer with me. I was on a short vacation for uh, a three-day weekend. However, uh, I am back, and also another thing is that last week, jack shit happened. Like pretty much nothing really happened on the front, and um, but this week we actually have a lot of updates. So this week we're gonna have a really proper video, and this week we're gonna go back to Avdivka, which is has been the center of Russian offensive operations for the winter of 2023-2024. And this week, um, at the end of this week, basically the southern defense lines of Ukraine have absolutely collapsed. Um, the basically this this basically pre-war front line has completely collapsed, and the Russians are now entering the residential area of Avdivka. This is one of the biggest breakthroughs so far um, of, of of Avdivka, and so there's a lot to talk about. So what happened exactly? So from what the reports are coming in is that along this this like pre-war front line right here, where the Russians have been trying to break through towards one of the main defense points of Ukraine in the Tsar's hut. This place right here with the fork and knife. This is one of the. This was on a hill, and the Ukrainians are using this as one of the main defense nodes of the southern defense of Avdivka. Well, because of Ukrainian losses in manpower, there seems to be they managed to find a a uh, place where there is less of a defense of with manpower. They were able to sneak through and manage to collapse Ukrainian defenses here, and they managed to break through this line and advance and take the Tsar's hut, which is one of the uh, one of the main. AFU defense uh, defenses in the southern part of Avdivka. Not only that, they managed to take the Sokotovka uh, um, dachas right here. This was another fortified area. You can see all the trenches that are along this area. So this area c got collapsed. And so now the Ukrainians are fleeing to the residential area which the, with these tiny houses. And not only that, the Russians have expanded their bridgehead from the Tsar's hut into uh, this area right here in the Stobornia Street, Spodnoria Street, and Chernonoska Street. These three streets right here. And actually confirmed geolocated footage shows Russian troops right here advancing. And so by this time, by the end of today, there was reports coming in that basically the Russians have advanced up to like this point right here along this rail line and have our, have captured this area. Now we'll have to see if they could solidify their gains here. However, um, I, uh, you know, so they're basically, Russians are now in these three areas, have entered the residential area and have broken through out of the Tsar's hut. This is basically means this is a collapse of the Ukrainian defenses because there's only two defense nodes that the Ukrainians have in the, uh, in the south of Avdivka, the Donetsk filtration plant right here and the X air defense base right here. And however, I expect by the end of next week, if the Russians are able to hold this gain right here, that this ex air defense base will collapse, and the Ukrainian the Ukrainians will have to be forced back to their next defense uh, line. Now they have a there's a when we talk about a def so why I say that is because when they advance when, if the Russians are able to take the land this these three streets right here, they could cut off the supply routes to this ex air defense base and basically start advancing from Opetna right here towards the east. And then towards the west from these these new uh, gains in the in the south of Avdivka, and basically the Ukrainians will be forced to give up this area and retreat back to the what they call the ninth quarter, the ninth district, right here. These these area of high rise buildings right here. So that's the um, uh, where um, this is where you this is one of the most fortified areas of Ukraine of the of Ukrainian Avdivka line. So this is where the Ukrainians will start. Uh, retreating back to after the southern defense lines have collapsed. Um, this is also going to be playing out in the filtration system. Now, um, the way they're going to do that is by advancing from Kamyanka and then expand out of their, you know, into the residential area, as we can see from um, from the industrial zone, which the Russians captured last month, and into this residential area right here. Because once this falls, this area will fall. And the Ukrainians seem to be retreating to this new line of defense with the cemetery, the hosp small hospital, the church here. Basically try to kind of level the front with their defense node in uh, the 9th district. However, if the Russians are able to capture the cemetery 
and expand these kind of fields to the uh, east of Abdivka, they could link up, well, at least that's the hope, to link up with the forces coming from the north near Kamyanka and then force the Ukrainians to retreat from the Donetsk filtration system back towards the residential area. So the southern defense lines of Avdivka have collapsed, um, and uh, basically this gives the Russians the ability to collapse the rest of this front and basically force the Ukrainians back uh, to a more better position to defend. Uh, however, not only the Russians are not just pushing from the south, they're also advancing from the north here. Not from Stepova, but more towards uh, near Kamyanka. Now, as we know, we know there's been, Russians have been pushing down along these dachas and have taken this uh, filtration plant um, as well. And so they've been advancing along these dachas here for a little bit. However, uh, this, the front right here, kind of along uh, this highway, have been, has been quiet since the Russians started their offensive again on October 10th. However, the Russians have restarted their offensive from Kamyanka and managed to capture this, these fields right here. And it seems like the goal is to reach this lake. And kind of basically, uh, once, this, once they reach the lake here, they could uh, link up with the Russian forces trying to comb through these dachas and reach this lake in these, basically reach the residential area of Odivka here. Another thing about this is that there's another uh, Ukrainian defense node here that the Russians are trying to outflank, which is in this area right here. You can see the uh, trenches here. You can see this trench right here, this trench, this trench. So you can see like the pre-war uh, trench lines here and everything. And so um, the Russians cannot attack it head on because this air, this, these fields are mined. And so the Russians are trying to attack it from the side here. And, you know, and this, the next place that the Russians are trying to attack is what they call the Avdivka Quarry, this area right here. So the, the Ukrainians have fallen back here. They're trying to fall back to the lake. And so the Russians are trying to capture this quarry in order, or you know, at least get towards it so they could cut off the Ukrainian grouping here and force them back to the quarry. And again, this also, if they could link up from Russian troops entering the residential area from here, they could also cut off Ukrainian troops from the filtration system. So I'm actually gonna go to uh, my Twitter thread that I made here to kind of show a little bit of what the Russians are planning here because it gives a bit of a context here. So this is the map I kind of made. I'm gonna explain it now. So let's explain what the Russians are trying to do. Now, um, one thing that uh, the Russians originally wanted to do was to surround Avdivka. This is why they, all the clashes were happening in the north here. You know, they reached the rail line, they actually made a small bridgehead near Stepova. Um, they advanced a little bit north towards Nova Kolonova, towards Orcheshini. However, you know, besides maybe capturing this, uh, this Terracon, this dominant height, and then also reaching the rail line, which was some, gives them more a lot of tactical benefits, they actually never managed to actually surround Avdivka. So uh, while they improved their tactical posturing, it wasn't an actual operational success to encircle Avdivka. And as we saw with the battles of Stepova, there hasn't been, um, the Russians have not been able to advance more after they've, they're kind of in a standstill here. And thus, it looks like the Russians have changed tactics. They're now going to advance on Abdivka directly. So what, one thing is that uh, it seems like they're, instead of going towards surrounding Abdivka, there's going to be two, they're going to try to push the Ukrainians um, and kind of squeeze them out. Now, as we can see, I actually kind of mentioned this in my earlier in this video. As you can see, there's two, they're going to expand out of the Tsar's hut and out from Opena to push the Ukrainians away from the ex-air defense base. Try to basically level this front and push it to the 9th district right here. This, what I circled in black. Um, along with this, uh, as we expand out of the industrial zone and away, uh, from Kamyanka, they'll try to basically reach the main residential area. You can see this in this first black line here that I made. And basically the Russians are, are gonna force the Ukrainians away from the filtration plant, away from this uh, trench network right here uh, that I have with my mouse to the south of Kamyanka, and basically forced all the Ukrainians back to the residential area. Once this happens, this is the first goal of the current, what the Russians are trying to do right now. After that happens, the Russians are gonna try to clear up the residential area. Basically, this is stage one, is to reach this black line right here. And after that, they could they could pretty much easily take this residential area. It's pretty easy. It's it's not they're not as fortified. However, the where the Ukrainian 
you know, so I expect this residential area to be taken pretty easily. That is, that is crossed in yellow. However, after that happens, there's going to be two last things that Russia needs to do in order to take Avdivka. Um, there is the Avdivka Coke plant circled in black right here and the Avdivka 9th district right here. And since this is since these two areas are closest to um, the uh, fire uh, the uh, the supply routes, these are easy to more easier to like to supply and rotate than trying to defend these outer edges that are very hard to defend. And so, uh, and these are also very heavily fortified, very easily, they are very good for defense, more so than the residential areas here. And so, uh, what we uh, see here uh, is, um, you know, the Russians are now trying to reach this black line, they're gonna take the residential area, and then the Ukrainians will have a new defense line with the Avdivka Coke plant, the 9th district, and along the rail line, we could, that is in the second black line right here. And uh, that this will basically connect these two nodes here. Now, I don't know how the Russians will be able to take these two areas. Like, I, they can. It's not impossible. But these are very heavily fortified. Um, if Russian progress is good and they keep, if they manage to actually continue progress as they've done, they could probably take, reach this black line and force the Ukrainians within a month, I think. I think by... Towards the end of February, we could try to see most of, we could probably, possibly by the end of February, see most of Avdivka fall into Russian hands. However, it will not all be taken by the Russians. There will still be the 9th District and the Coke plant. So a lot of people are making like a lot of assumptions, like, oh, this, this, this breakthrough in the south of Avdivka is proof that like Avdivka is about to fall. No, it is a good progress for the Russians to actually be able to expand their operations, but one thing you have to note is that there's still a lot of strong points the Ukrainians could defend Avdivka from. And since the Russians do not have really fire control or complete fire control over the supply lines, they can continue rotating in troops to defend. So the, the lots of good pro, like good progress from the Russians. It allows them to expand their holdings in Avdivka. But uh, so far, um, it, this is not the end of Avdivka. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, but, you know, if progress continues, we might see Avdivka fall in three or four months. Um, you know, it was a little bit stagnant there, but, you know, now it looks like Russians actually do have the possibility to um, take it. You know, we might see it taken by April or so. So uh, that is Avdivka. That is one of the biggest gain. That's what's been happening in Avdivka. Um, we're now going to actually expand towards, uh, we're going to go to the, actually, let's continue on the Donetsk front since we're there anyway. Um, when we talk about Donetsk itself, which Avdivka is part of, uh, there's actually been some clashes near Paramyska and Nivolska here. The Russians have actually been able to, some sources say, clear up on this edge of the uh, lake here, this reservoir type thing here, this area right here. Uh, the Ukrainians have been trying to basically keep this this like kind of small, um, how do you say it, like out like a grouping here so that they could have eyes closer to Donetsk. However, they don't want the Russians to keep pushing, to, to, you know, taking more Paramyska, because then the, the closer they could link up with the, the Russian grouping in Vodana to the north here, they could put the pressure on Paramyska on two sides and squeeze the Ukrainians out and push them towards this other village right here. So they're trying to keep the Russians at bay. However, the Russians have been advancing. They keep advancing along these, uh, these, um, um, uh, these uh, houses here, and they're basically trying to link up with the Russian grouping here and reach this kind of, you know, intersection right here. And so um, the, the R Russians are now pushing in Paramyska. They're not going to. They're obviously not going to continue taking it again. This is but this front has been stagnant for over a year now, and the Ukrainians are already dug in in Paramyska after they lost Pesky in the summer of 2022. And so. You know, uh, the Ukrainians are heavily dug in, dug in in Paramyska. Both the Russians are advancing here, and uh, they're also trying to, uh, you know, be better tactically position themselves towards Novolska. This area is another place the Russian. This is like one of the main fortified strongholds of Ukraine, because this opens up the fields of uh, of Donetsk, and this could. Uh, so the Ukrainians need to hold this to stop the Russians from getting to the north of Krasnogorivka. And, and such like that. So this is a strong point. The Russians are trying to tactically improve their positions. 
um, here. They're trying to advance in these tree lines. However, it is small gains. Small gains in Paramysk and Novolska for the Russians, but again, there's pressure here. And, the Rus and this is part of, again, the main Russian push to push the Ukrainian artillery away from Donetsk. Um, so that's something that needs to be mentioned about. Um, so some progress there. Um, I'll talk about Marinka in a bit. So now that we talked about the Donetsk front, let us actually go to the next most interesting part of the front line in the Luhansk front or the Osko front right here. And this is split into two parts. People call this the Kupiansk front, the Laban front, but I call this, it's all part of like the same, because they both are have the same goals pretty much. And this time we're actually gonna talk about a place that has been kind of quiet for a little bit and in the, this area. So as we know, the Russians have been trying to reach Kupiansk and the Osko River. Now the Russians have not been able to get Sinkovka. They've been, there's been lots of battles for Sinkovka, but the Russians keep getting defeated and the Ukrainians still hold, a, st have still, are holding in Sinkovka. So the Russians have not been able to batter their way through Sinkovka. And this area in the north of Kupiansk has been of stagnant, like the Russians have been attacking, but they've been failing. And so the, what the Russians have been trying to do is push towards this node, right? This Ukrainians have a defense node in Klishovka, Klatorovka, Ivanivka. This area right here is very heavily, you know, the Re Ukrainians are heavily defending this area. They know if this falls, this opens up the area, you know, again, it, again then there's just fields toward and, until they reach the south of Kupiansk. Just as they're trying to hold on in Sinkovka to prevent the Russians from reaching the north of Kupiansk, uh, they're trying to hold in Klishovka, Klatorovka to deny the Russians from reaching the south of, of uh, Kupiansk. And that's been working. The Russians made small tactical gains, but they have not actually managed to break the Ukrainian defense nodes here. So what's changed this week? This week, the Russians have changed tactics. So from more south of this area, in this intersection of the Kharkov and Luhansk oblasts, the Russians actually man made a attack across this rail line and managed to capture the village of uh, Kromolonivka here. I don't know how to pronounce it, but they captured this village. This is one of the first, there's actually a, um, a small village. It's not like it's ground shattering, but it is a gain for the Russians. And they managed to basically break through in the south of this area. And they managed to capture fully the uh, this uh, um, highway right here. What is what is this highway called? You would think they would tell you. I can't. They don't tell me what the highway is called. But this highway, they managed to fully capture, and they actually managed to plant their flag here. And so, with this bridgehead right here that they managed to expand from this rail line, what are the Russians now trying to do? It looks like from you know, and this happened towards the end of this week. So, you know, this this front is still a bit fluid. However. It looks like the Russians are going to. Um, the Russians are now advancing to the south of Kromolivka and reaching Berestova here. So it looks like they're trying to reach the out. The, some sources are saying they're reaching to the outskirts of Berestova here. Some sources are saying they're now advancing towards Tabinka here. And so, if the Russians are able to continue operations, like maybe this was just a one-off, and now Ukrainians are sending troops to kind of defend these two villages and maybe progress here slows down and nothing else happens. But what the Russians are hoping to do is that if the Russians could improve upon their progress here in the south of, uh, of the Kupiansk frontier, they could take Berestova, they could take Dabivka. And if these villages fall, not only will then this open up the front towards the Oskol River more to the south, they could then flank Ukrainian positions in Klishovka, Klartorovka, and then the Ukrainian grouping here will collapse and thus the Russians will be able to expand towards the Osko River. So a lot of progress, you know, this is a, a promising development for the Russians, but it, it remains to be seen if they can exploit that to collapse this kind of area right here and it reach this area of the Osko River. Because then they could roll up to the north and, you know, at least, and then they begin the battle for Kupiansk. But again, they have to break through Tabivka and Pishana here, and also then outflank Klishovka, Krotolovka, because this de Ukrainian defense line right here is preventing the Russians from being able to reach the Oskol. But this capture of this village right here after breaking through this rail line uh, threatens the Ukrainian positions here. So this is something that had to be talked about. So some progress there. We'll see how that point, how that area continues. Uh, in the Laman area of the, of the Luhansk front, there's been some progress in the Sierbrenka, uh, uh, Servetsky Donetsk uh, forest here. Uh, the Russians are expanding to the south of Dubrova, 
and trying to capture some, trying to basically not have the Ukrainians be so close to this kind of, uh, kind of outskirt. You know, this, this this is the front line up near Crimea, and this is like the Ukrainians are all over these forests, and this is like kind of the front edge position, and so the Russians are trying to keep it. And so in order to do that, they're expanding to the south of it. So they're putting pressure on the Sibirianki Forest. We mentioned about last video about Russian positions trying to uh, reach the Zirbets River here, which is the first step in order to reach the Oska River. However, it, from sources, it looks like the Russians have been have been stopped on uh, the outskirts of Terni and Yampolovka. Well, not the outskirts, but the Russians managed to capture some fields and everything here, but then the R Ukrainians sent reinforcements there to hold the line. They do not want to lose their bridgehead here because they know if the Russians continued and took Terni and Yampolovka, they could advance north and take uh, Nova uh, Nevsky, Bakivka, and basically flank it from two sides and collapse this area because then the Ukrainians will have to make a new defense line to the uh, left bank of the Zhirbets River. So uh, some the Russians are pushing here to put pressure, but the Ukrainians are trying to hold on. I think I had a uh, thing here that explained it. Nope, not a, an Avdivka here. Give me a sec. Yep, here we go, I think. Is this the area? What was it? Oh, yeah, no, it's something else. Never mind. Anyway, so that's the uh, Luhansk front. Uh, the Russians are trying to reach the Osko River, and it is, uh, it, the Ukrainians are putting up a very tough fight here. But the, Ukraine, the Russians are finally making some gains here. So we'll see if those gains could lead to something else. So far, small gains, but gains nonetheless, and that is more that can be said in the last few months there. Anyway, let's go to the Sirisk front and the Bakhmut front. Um, this front is kind of... Uh, Let's talk Bakhmut first. There's not uh, there, now nothing big happened ba in Bakhmut. Surprisingly, this was actually one of the places where there's a lot of action. However, there's been a slowdown in operations here. However, the Russians have raised their flag in the northern part of Bogdanovka here. However, uh, with Russian troops in Bogdan, uh, in basically proving that they're in the northern part of Bogdanovka. However, uh, just because they raised their flag, that was a bit premature on their part because. The southern part of Bogdanovka, this area right here, is under complete Ukrainian control. But this does prove that the village of Bogdanovka is split in half. Uh, the Russians are basically trying to take the Popovsky forest right here, and they are trying to basically take this forest right here, because these need to be taken in order to take Bogdanovka and start their advance towards Ivanivska here. There's also been some clashes in Klishivka here. So the Russians are battling for the hills. The battles, no one's really battling in Klishivka itself because if the, if the heights and the hills fall in the north of Klishivka, then Klishivka falls. In that end, the Russians have actually been advancing in this area right here. This is another hill right here. And the Russians are basically trying to have almost capture this hill right here. Um, they're basically, this is another hill in Klishivka and the Russians actually managed to capture most of it in the last week. They captured this, villa, uh, this uh, hill right here, and basically maybe they could link up with the dominant hill, uh, this hill right here, will allow the Russians to link up and uh, capture this strong position right here. But the Ukrainians are still in, on this hill and on this hill right here, this forest line. And so they cannot capture um, Klishevka until these two uh, hills fall. So the battle for the Klishevka hills are, is ongoing. Um, but uh, they are needed if the Russians want to take Klishivka and Drivka and push the Ukrainians back to the canal and towards the kind of hills of uh, Ivanivska or the forest lines near Ivanivska. So some small progress here, but the Russians are still making, uh, but the Ru there are still clashes in Bakhmut. Now let's actually talk about something where there's actually been a lot of progress. Let's talk about the Sivrisk front. The Russians have been uh, pushing in Vilagorovka. They've been trying to enter the, they've actually been, this industrial zone right here been, has been going back and forth. I like Vilagorovka because on the map you could see the extent of the destruction. So you could see Vilagorovka has basically been wiped out from the map here. You can see that it's completely destroyed. And you could see the industrial zone is completely destroyed as well. How, so this is like, you know, the actual, how the front looks like. You know, so it's like, 
sometimes when we use these maps, we see a completely covered village and everything, but we don't see the trenches, we don't see the strong points, we don't see everything reduced to ruin, and that is what the Russians and the Ukrainians are fighting in. So anyway, the Russians have been have re-entered this industrial zone. The Russians are trying to re-enter the, these uh, tree lines in the outskirts of Bilogorovka. And so the Russians are making uh, uh, small uh, attacks here. But where the main area is interesting is in the south of Sevesk here. The Russians actually managed to capture the village of Vesola here. Now, Vesola is also a village that has been reduced to ruin and is actually in the lowlands. However, the Russians have been able to capture it because with the advancement of up on the... As the Russians have been van advancing up along this rail line in the la in during the month of December, they managed to capture a good advantageous position to be able to capture this village. Now the battles are going on for what they call the Vesola Heights. You can see the Vis this area right here and uh, this area right here. You could kind of see with the map with some you could see the kind of some small trenches and everything here. So right now, the Russians are trying to basically force the Ukrainians away from these trenches. If the Russians are able to take these hills, the Vesola Hills here, then they, they, this opens up a lot of possibilities for the Russians. They'll be able to outflank Rizdolovka from the east here and manage to take this village as well. And not only that, the main goal here, from what it seems like, is to reach the villages of Vimvka and Ivano-Dyrvka. Because then this gives the Russians operational space in these hills, because right now, holding these villages allows the Ukrainians to put pressure on the Russians on this highway leading to Solidar. However, uh, if the Russians take it, then the Russians can put pressure on, instead put pressure on Ukrainians and Servesk. Now, I don't think there's going to be a direct attack. You might be wondering, okay, let's say they manage to capture these hills and this they continue expanding along the rail line and manage to capture Vimvka and Ivano Dyrvka. And then event also, the reason why Sporna has been taken is because this area right here, this forest is under Ru under Ukrainian control, and thus prevents the Russians from completely securing themselves in Sporina. So the Russians need to do that in order to uh, need to capture this uh, forest in order to take Sporina. However, as we can see here, in what I show right here, is that um, the Russian? This is where the Russians want to go. This black line here. Now, I don't think they're going to continue expanding. The Ru the Ukrainians have defenses in Sivetsk. They have defenses along this river, and I don't think the Russians are going to do a direct assault on Sivetsk. I think they're going to try to wait until the Russians have expanded towards Liman and capture this bank of the Sivetsky Donetsk River, because if that falls. Um, uh, if that falls, then the Ukrainians, they'll be, the Russians will be able to outflank Sivirsk from the north here. And thus, then the Russians will be able to put the squeeze on the logistics of Sivirsk. So uh, I, a direct attack will be very costly. However, I, don't, I think they're trying to put the pressure on it and basically expand their zone of control here. Because, you know, again, as we saw in Avdivka, you might be ideally wanting to surround and cut off your enemy, but sometimes that might not work out. Maybe they see you and put, you know, uh, put the stop on your plans. And, you know, they need to take Seversk in order to continue their offensive towards the last Ukrainian defense line in Donbass, or at least the main one. I should say not the last one, but the main one, the strongest one the slavyansk toresk defense line here. But they need to take Severesk first. So some progress here. The Russians are vanished to capture Vesola and are now creeping upwards towards Vimka and ivano Dyrvka. So we'll have to see how the Russians are able to continue in these fields here. There are, right now, clashes are going on for these hills here, which is the next tactical objective, so we'll see if the Russians are able to achieve that. Let us now go to the South Donetsk area. So in Marinka, the Russians have been able to adv continuously advance. It seems some Russian sources are saying they're, the Russians are advancing toward in this uh, northern part of Grigorivka, and they're also advancing to the south of Grigorivka. It seems like right now the Russians are trying to slowly comb through these villages to reach kind of where I think the Ukrainians have their main defense line in Grigorivka with these like big houses, you know, these big warehouses and the, these buildings right here. And so the Russians are just slowly advancing up here. However, again, the more they advance up here, the more they expose their flanks. And so they need to secure their flanks in order to continue reaching the center of Grigorivka. So 
in order, so there's been some small tactical progress, but they cannot do a full-scale charge into Grigorivka because of uh, the flanking problem. But there's some progress there. Now, one thing that's been interesting is in the South Donetsk area is the uh, the village of Novomikhailovka. Now, we've mentioned the battle for Novomikhailovka. The Russians managed to enter Nov well, not enter, but they managed to begin clashes in the village. However, a direct assault has actually not yielded the results the Russians expected. So the Russians have not been able to capture Novomikhailovka with a direct assault. That being said, it looks like the Russians are now changing uh, tune or t changing tactics here. Uh, the Russians are now advancing to the south of Novomikhailovka. They managed to actually take some fields here. They managed to take this tree line right here and this tree line right here. And they're now advancing towards this tree line. These, these fields are mined. They're, they're, you know, they're fortified because this, is, this has been a static front for a long while. And so the, uh, they're slowly combing towards the south of Novomikhailovka. Not only that, they're also trying to come to the north of Novomikhailovka. Some sources are saying this tree line has been captured by the Russians, and the Russians, after capturing this strong point right here, are trying to take this tree line right here. So it looks like now the Russians are now focusing on the flanks of Novomikhailovka because they, a direct assault did not push the Ukrainians out. However, they think that the Russians are now trying to take the, the north and south, and that after they take the north and south of Novomikhailovka, they could attack it again, and then the pressure will be too great, and they could finally take Nova Mikhailovka and force the Ukrainians back to Konstantinovka here. The main goal here is that the Ukrainians want to hold Nova Mikhailovka because if that falls, then it will, the Russians will have a free hand to reach where the Ukrainians are setting up their defense lines in Ugladar, Konstantinovka, and Pojeba, these mines right here in Vodana. It's kind of hard to see on it, but, you know, this is a very heavily mined air. well, I don't just see, there's a lot of mines here, both figuratively and literally, well, literally in the sense there's mines, and there's also like mines where they dig shit, so, you know, both of those things. Anyway, uh, a little bit elf. Um, anyway, uh, the this line right here is one of the main supply routes to Ugladar, and uh, the Russians are trying to reach it. The Ukrainians don't want to basically make allow, allow Russians to contest this area. Uh, however, just because if the Russians do cut off this area, it's not the end of the world for Ugladar, but it is one step closer in putting the squeeze on Ugladar. I mentioned this in my past videos that the Russians are trying to do island hop, uh, village hopping here along this river and to not only secure the flanks of their push towards Karakova here, but also because they're trying to uh, reach um, is, to, is to cut off Ugladar as well. So this serves double purposes. And that's why the Ukrainians are trying to hold Monova Mikhailovka because they don't want to lose this defense, this first village. So uh, some small v gains in the fields, but so far the Ukrainians are holding, but, you know, it is, you know, there's been small, some small gains here. What else? Um, in the Z there's actually uh, in the Zaporozhia front, the Russians are still pushing. There's not been actually much changes I could talk about, but I could talk about where the Russians are pushing. The R Russians are trying to clear the fields west of Robotina, and also the R Russians are trying to clear the fields in the no in the northwest from Verbova and Novoprovka. Here, it seems like the Ukrainians are holed up in Robotina and kind of in these these kind of fields right here. So the Ukrainians are heavily fortifying themselves here. And uh, as the Russians push them away from the first kind of defense line of that the Ukrainians managed to uh, enter during the summer counteroffensive. The whole point is to push the Ukrainians back towards uh, Orekov and back to where the front line was before the offensive. But small game, small, there's clashes, but not nothing major has happened in Zaporozhia in the last week. And let's talk about, lastly, let's talk about the Kherson front. And, you know, again, as always, um, the Russians have actually, now this week there's actually been some change. So the Russians have managed to quickly have, the Ukrainian bridge heading Krinky is rapidly collapsing. Um, the Russians have not completely cleared this village yet. It's not like the Russians have managed to clear it of everything, managed to secure themselves here again. Um, what this does show is that uh, however, is that the Ukrainians have been basically pushed out of the village for the most, but there's still, there's still troops there, there's some booby traps. However, the Russians have, uh, while well, they've not been able to uh, clear it because of mines, because of traps that the Ukrainians put up, uh, 
is that basically the uh, the bridgehead is almost over, and within the next few weeks, we'll see this bridgehead be finally cleared. And because the Ukrainians, because of the weather, they've not been able to properly supply, and they basically are just throwing their elite marine troops here for nothing. They're just sending elite troops here to hold the line and just get bombed to hell. Yes, the Russians have actually been losing some troops and equipment here because of the abnormally strong Ukrainian defenses here. However, um, this bridgehead's going to be over, and the Ukrainians are going to get uh, are going to retreat to the left bank of the Dnieper River here. So that is uh, Krinky is going to fall in the in a matter of a few weeks, and um, yeah. So uh, yep, that is basically it. Um, that is the extent of the battlefield changes this this uh, these last two weeks, um, and I will continue updating you with what happens. So I hope you guys like this video. Give it a like and share it around. Um, and you know, when you like it, it basically helps me out. And uh, if you really if you want to see videos similar to this one, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also comment your thoughts as well. So aim high and wander on.